Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Recently, we interviewed Pastor Jack Hibbs from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California. We'd like to complete part two of that interview today. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. And our job is to love those who judge us, which is a high standard, a very high standard. In Matthew yep. 7, it says, judge not, lest ye be judged, for with what measure you meet shall be measured unto you. But if you judge yourself and you come to God and you get into mm. this book, the Holy Spirit will speak to you as you read this book. And, and he'll take out of you what the devil put in and put back in you what the devil took out. And he'll clean you up, give you a checkup from the neck up. And that's a form <laughs> of your own personal judgment that you look at yourself and you don't compare yourself to anyone else except that's Jesus right. Christ. So when we're talking about judgment, we're not, we're not pointing fingers at everybody else. What we're trying to do is warn people that the direction that we're going, there's a freight train coming. And you're mm. on the track and you got to get off the track. Now, uh, when we look at national, we, we were talking about like judging yourself on a personal basis. Um, yeah. I, I continually talk about judging yourself and we're, we're not out against anybody. We're not out against the LGBT. We're not judging them. We're not judging adulterers. We're just warning you that something's coming something big it's global it's bible he has spoken it he will also do it he has purposed it and he will bring it to pass when you get into prophecy god forewarns you of the mm -hmm. coming judgment and he also forewarns you of the coming wrath which which brings us to a chapter that that you and i are are right in line with in our interpretations you mentioned that the war in Ukraine could lead to the Gog-Magog war when several nations, including Russia, Iran, Turkey, which, by the way, have already formed a coalition. Yep. They attack Israel with about four or five other nations. And this is what yep. you state in your book, uh, Pastor Jack. Bible scholars agree that this failed attack by Russia and its allies, as outlined in Ezekiel 38, will take place either just before the rapture of the church or just after the rapture. Now, here's the question. Mm -hmm. If the rapture is pre-tribulation, which my wife and I have studied everything, and we're standing, we are voting pre-tribulation rapture from the verses that we've got in the Bible. Right. If the rap when this war takes place, it's at the beginning of the tribulation, correct? That's correct. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Could the rapture happen during this war? And the end of this war is a burning fiery furnace. And it says in 2 Thessalonians 1 7 8, to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking mm. vengeance on them that know not god and that obey not the gospel of the lord jesus christ could could this event of the gog magog war you you equate it with the rapture could this thing all be wrapped up in in one thing and it happens right during that war can you see that happening well we know this about the ezekiel battle is that it is extremely quick it is extremely yes. fast even even though it's in a mass of some five, possibly maybe six nations, but predominantly five coming against Israel. Whatever happens, remember, you know this well, Rick, they, the invading armies, they make it to what looks like uh, maybe Mount Hermon, yes. maybe not even, not, not even the, uh, the Galilee region, uh, it looks like Mount Hermon. Why? They come out of the north. It says so. And it says that five-sixths of the invading army is going to be destroyed by the hand of God. Whatever by goes fire. on, by, by fire. exactly, it's going to be extremely fast, extremely quick. 
And I personally believe that it's at such the proximity of the opening throes of the tribulation period that, and and, and this I believe because of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that I believe the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the church is removed. I believe yes. the Holy Spirit will step aside as he delivers, as it were, the church up to the hands of Christ in John 14. That said, in that proximity, things could start off real quick. And um, it's going to move very, very fast. We know from Ezekiel 38 that when that event takes place, it says, then Israel, there will be an awakening in Israel. The Bible says that the Jews will begin to believe in God again, which is interesting. Right now, you've been to Israel, Rick. You go there, and it's shocking to meet Jews. They say they're Jews, which is hilarious to me because they'll tell you in the next breath, I don't believe in God. I thought you said you were a Jew. I am. But you don't believe in God? The word Jew means to praise God, to be a praiser of God. Well, I don't believe in God because where was he in the Holocaust? He abandoned us. Yes. Oh, so the truth is, yes. the truth is, you do believe in God. You just don't like the way that he's handling things. Well, their their attention is going to get grabbed by God in this Ezekiel battle. I encourage your viewers to read Ezekiel thirty seven and eight, eight and watch and nine. And nine, because nine is the mop-up. Yeah. I mean, nine is the cleanup. Yes. And isn't it interesting, Rick, that it says that the materials that Israel cleans up, uh, they will they will use for power. They will use for energy for seven years, it says. In 2019, Prophecy USA showcased biblical warnings of the coming New World Order. In 2020, we warned you of their plans to use COVID-19 to accelerate that agenda. In 2021, we warned of the Babylonian spirits who were invading our nation to provoke curses upon the land, emulating Sodom and Gomorrah. But what is next? Prophecy USA is proud to present The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. In this exciting book, you will discover where traditional theologians have missed the mark and why prophecy teachers have refused to acknowledge that America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled. When you give a donation of $35 or more, you will receive The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Or for a donation of just $60 or more, you will receive both books, The Coming Exodus and The Hour That Changes Everything. Call 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org. Yeah. I preach that there's a lot of Christians that are going to miss the tribute, miss the rapture, because half of the half of the uh, virgins missed, and five out of seven churches in the book of Revelation are all messed up with adultery and with fornication, and their their gods in Laodicea is money. Do you believe that every person that's born again that's a Christian? Does that necessarily mean that they are the bride of Christ? He said, I, pray that you might be found worthy. Right, right, right. Yeah, I personally I mean, believe I mean, this. What I, I personally believe, first of all, by to answer the question, I have to ask one, and it's this. What makes you and I worthy at this very moment? Well, it just so happens to be the same thing that the moment uh, uh, the thief on the cross, for example, accepted Christ. Yes. and how was he deemed worthy to be with Jesus both in paradise and in heaven forever? What, what, what qualified him as worthy? I believe this, that the just shall live by faith. So there's a warning in Scripture that says that we need to be ready lest we be ashamed at his coming. So yes. I do believe that a born-again Christian will go up even if they're backslidden. I do believe they'll go up if they're okay. born again. If they're born again. Here's the thing about the virgins, which you raise a very, very good point. This, And this is one reporter's opinion. You've got 10 virgins, and you've got that parable clustered in among other parables. And the whole thrust of the parables is this. Be faithful. Be ready. Be watching. Be looking. There is this attitude 
And there's a clear, in my opinion, there's a clear difference between those that are in the family of God and those that are maybe religious. There are those that are tares. Yes. They look just like us, yes. but they're not of us. When the rapture happens, there's going to be an absolute separation. But I do not believe that those who are born again and are backslidden or having a bad thought or they decide to go to a, a movie that day are left behind. I just know this. <laughs> there's a warning. Don't mess up lest you be ashamed at his coming. That that would be yes. in other words, you would go up with your head kind of hanging down. I don't think I don't think God wants us to do that. He wants us to be ready, but this is important. The Holy Spirit dwelling within a believer is the seal, it is the deposit, it is the mark of the true believer. Once again, when Christ comes in John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, I believe, like the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, Christ sent the Spirit down the Holy Spirit indwelling every believer will present that believer to Christ in the atmosphere. And then the Holy Spirit will go to work, we know, with the nation of Israel. A tremendous outpouring. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and 3, will be fulfilled. You'll see uh, Israel, the remnant, preaching the gospel. The 144,000 will come forth. Where the, where the church left off, Israel will pick up. And where Israel should have run with the ball 2,000 years ago, they're going to get a second chance in the tribulation period. They're going to get a second chance. <laughs> and, the, and the Antichrist will persecute them just like the Antichrist spirit now is going to persecute the church before we leave. Yep. Now, af after, after the Gog-Magog war, uh, it says that the Antichrist will sign a seven-year peace deal with Israel. Do you believe the Gog-Magog war will be the, the dividing part where after that war, Israel will sign and say, we're not going to have any more wars with the I, Antichrist? And he, he guarantees them. Is, is that where you're going to put that, that signing of that peace agreement? I think right after the Gog-Magog? I believe, again, again, this is one reporter's opinion. I believe that just... Yep. Just after the Ezekiel battle, I think that the Antichrist is going to arise. And yes, Israel's not going to want war anymore. That's going to scare the snot out of them, right? They're going to be freaking out over what just happened. Some will begin to believe the scriptures, but an, the nation appears to be snookered by the embracing of this one that Daniel calls the 11th horn. Um, the one yes. in chapter nine that you're referring to, this this king that will arise. And I do believe, because it says it clearly, it says that he's going to have this seven-year treaty, this the 70th week of Daniel, it's affectionately called. If he signs that in the beginning, it's seven years long, but it tells us that halfway through, he breaks that treaty. That's three and a half years. Yes. In into it. And how does he break it? It's amazing because he breaks it in the temple in Jerusalem. Well, folks, there is no temple at this moment in Jerusalem. That means there's a Jerus there's a temple coming to Jerusalem. He's going to break that treaty with Israel right in the middle. How does he do it? He presents himself as God. Second Thessalonians chapter two says that he presents himself as God. And the Bible says that God will send the world strong delusion so that they will believe the lie. Couple that with Matthew 24. Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, don't go back to your house to get your jacket. Get down and run. If you're in the field, take off. Leave. Pray that your escape is not on the Sabbath day or, or, or in winter. Get out of town, because this is the launch of a time of such trouble that has never been, nor ever shall be. So we've got the seven-year tribulation period, but the last three and a half years is known as great tribulation. It's all bad, don't get me wrong. All seven years is bad, but the last part is the unfolding of the seal judgments, the, the trumpet yes. judgments, the bowl judgments. The first part, don't let anybody fool you. The first part, you know, I've heard Christians say, Oh, the first part of the seven years is going to be fine. 
prosperity, peace, nothing wrong. Are you kidding? The book of Daniel says that he's that the Antichrist is going to deceive the world in those first three and a half years with peace and prosperity. You don't want anything to do with that. This is nothing to gamble. Now, now he will be, he will be, the Bible says, wounded in the head as a yeah. of death. And I heard, um, I believe it was Oral Roberts say that at that point, when he when he's wounded in the head, that's when Satan will enter him and he will he will believe that he is a god because Satan will it. enter him at that point. So that could be in the middle of the tribulation. Absolutely. I mean, the world's the world's gonna watch it. The world's gonna watch this yeah. guy come back to life. I mean, it'll be sobering. You know, Rick, think about this. I mean, I, it's so hard not to just jump out of my chair right now, because here you and I are in the 21st century, and the book of Revelation says that when this happens, everybody on earth will see it happen. How did John know that there would be YouTube or people streaming with their Apple phones, <laughs> right? How did he it's know? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. And then look, what I, I so agree with what you just said a moment ago. Allow me to say this, that the, the guy has got to build some credibility for the first three and a half years. Remember this. We'll say, Jack, why yes. do you say that? Because he's so- He'll efficient. come as a man of peace. Yeah, he's so yes. efficient at bringing peace. He's so efficient at calming the, the division between Islam and, and Israel. He's he's so efficient at bringing prosperity that the world loves him. Everybody's going to cry when he gets wounded. He's going to appear to be dead for three days. He's going to rise from the dead. And the world is going to rejoice that he's back. And they are going to pledge their allegiance to him. It makes perfect sense with what you just said. Perfect timing. Of course I'm a god. I'm a god. Shirley McLean's a god. You can be a god. Heck, everybody can be a god. Let's be a god. And the world's going to love him. But the difference is he is going to have AI at his fingertips because he's going to have an image. He's going to have an image that is yes. able to be look like it breathes, speaks. It's able to determine, I think, by AI, the image of the beast is going to be able to determine who's got the mark 666 and who doesn't. So there's an unholy trinity. There's Satan, who possesses the Antichrist, who uses an image of the beast. And it's quite remarkable. It's, it's like a knockoff of the holy trinity, but this is very much an ungodly trinity. With man's final attempt to rule the world, and the weirdest thing of all, Rick, is that Satan is somehow peeking through the eyes of this human being that's possessed by Satan. And the world is worshiping this man. And Satan is so perverse that that's close enough to him. He's just going to be so excited to finally get what he could not get from Jesus. Jesus wouldn't bow the knee to Satan. So Satan's going to get the world to bow the knee by manipulating the human being. It's going to be, it's going to be a time, friend, that as a Christian, you're going to escape. But I tell you, if you're not a Christian, um, wow, you are completely, it's gonna, it's gonna be you're terrible. wide open right now. You're, you're in such a dangerous spot. You have no idea that your feet are just gliding over the pit of hell right now as, as we speak. Terrifying. And, and, and the thing that's amazing is we're seeing the birth pangs. We're seeing a digital currency come in where you won't be able to buy or sell. Right. We're seeing the morals collapse where it says that the Antichrist will have no desire of women. Mm -hmm. And in um, Daniel, it says, and then in Joel, it says that they will trade a boy for a harlot. Yep. So we see the morals falling. We see technology now. Technology has finally caught up with Bible prophecy, <laughs> it's, it, which is what you just That's said. Right. So the Bible, the Bible's way ahead of Apple. The Bible's way ahead of all the technology. Right. God knew that there's going to be a digital implant, yep. a mark, and you won't be able to buy or sell. And after the Gog-Magog war, it will be a global phenomenon. It will be a perfect time right. to initiate the one world order, to initiate digital currency, to in initiate the ESG, the uh, right. environmental social governance, 
It'll take the Gog Magog war will be the dividing point. As soon as that's over, we're into the tribulation. Right. So right now we're watching the American dollar. And I was just watching, um, I, I, it was this week that you had Amir Safari on. That's right. And he was talking about what's happening in Africa. But we have we have close to 40 nations now coming up on August 23rd that want to leave the U.S. currency and go with BRICS. Absolutely. Now, BRICS is uh, Brazil, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, South China and South Africa. We now have over 50% of the world's population in those nations want to go away from the U.S. currency. Yep. And one president in Africa made this statement. He said, we are not going to let the United States push us yeah. into the LGBT agenda. Absolutely. So here you have right now, you have all of the things that are happening morally. America's walking away from her covenant. She's being filled That's with right. what, I, what I consider Babylonian spirits. That's right. And, and, and you can see, if you know anything about Bible prophecy, you can join the dots. And on one sense, Remarkable. it's extremely exciting. And on another sense, it's extremely sobering right. because there's so many people who just will not read this book. So, so our goal and your goal is to get people into this book pastor that's what you spent your whole life absolutely on. listen while you've been talking you said something that i have to add because you just went through a litany of items that relate to our day happening now yes. in correlation with the word of god so for example revelation yes. 18 you've already mentioned revelation 18 listen to this at yes. first, it's going to sound kind of, hurry up, Pastor, just get this done. But it talks about a coming global economy. And in that economy, John, yes. John tells us that in that economy, what makes it work is the sale of cinnamon, perfumes, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, and slaves, and those who traffic in the souls of men. Yes, human trafficking. Yes, sir. Right now, right now there's a movie out called The Sound of Freedom, and they go through and they show you that there's literally more human trafficking taking place today than at any other time in all of human history. And where's the outcry? Where yes. are the people beating the drum? Where is the anger over this? It's almost silent. And the number one, the number one people being trafficked are innocent, innocent children. Innocent children predominantly, listen, where's the feminist on this one? Innocent children, heavily female innocent children. Where's the feminist screaming yes. about the future of women when they're silent right now on the issue of young women being trafficked for sex slaves, as you said it, also little boys? It's epidemic, it's pandemic, yes. and uh, people are running around wearing a mask, uh, being afraid of getting a virus when we ought to be running around very concerned about sin and the, the judgment and eventual wrath of God. That's what we need to be afraid of is displeasing the almighty God of heaven and earth. Theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that America is not in the Bible. Prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that America is not in the Bible. But what does the Bible say? Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in scripture over 53 times, and now we want to put God's word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. 
And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. So, so those of those of you that are listening to our podcast and listening to our, our TV show, um, we have stressed so much. Get into a personal covenant with Amen. God. Jesus said that not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. I go to my father's house and I and he has many mansions. Mm. You when you focus on God, when you look at all of this, it can be sometimes overwhelming. But if you keep your mind on God, he'll keep you in perfect peace, knowing this, God's heart aches. He says, I have no, no delight in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would come and live. And what we're seeing is society, and we're seeing our nations go in a direction that God has warned them over and over and over again. Don't go this way. It leads to total destruction. But the Bible says, the Bible knows God is not excited about all this. God is a good God. He wishes above all things that you prosper and be in health. He's not, a, he's not an evil God. He's a good God. The devil's a bad devil, and he's good at it. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. And this is why... Uh, Pastor Jack's church, in the middle of the darkness, people are coming to the light and they're they're realizing that Jesus is alive and he's not only alive, he's coming back much sooner than many people think. Pastor Jack, I want to thank you so much for coming on our program. It's been a, an honor and delight. I've been watching and listening to your teaching for, for the last several months. And I said to my wife, that guy is hearing exactly what I'm hearing. Mm. And, and I, it was a delight to have you on our show. Thank you so much for coming. Well, on. Rick, the honor was mine. And I, I want to show you something before we go. You mentioned several verses or alluded okay. to them. Twice you mentioned Isaiah 26.3. And you alluded to in a paraphrase of Jeremiah 29.11, uh, where God's thoughts towards you are for good and for evil. And, and I just want you to know this. I don't know if you can see this, but this yes. is a prescription pad for... Uh, what I had, it looks like a medication from a doctor, prescription pad. And what I do is I write down Bible verses. There's Rick's name, and you shared two great verses. And these are the things that I pull off and I hand to somebody that I'm counseling with because this is the unerring word of God. And, and you, brother, you lift it up. You honor the word of God. God bless you. God bless Canada. And let's look up. Jesus is coming soon. Folks, we hope you enjoyed our interview with Pastor Jack Hibbs. Join us next week as we continue to watch prophecy being fulfilled in this great nation that we call the United States of America. This is Prophecy USA. My name's Rick Pearson, and I'm reminding you that God's in control. Jesus Christ is alive, and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom.